Sometimes there's a mystery detectives cannot solve. Their problems only multiply, solutions just evolve. And then comes the great divide that splits things all apart. Then you need the master, a man with math and heart. He's Abacus the Great. He'll clear up all suspicion. He'll distribute, regroup, solve for X, cause he's a math magician. Add, subtract, multiply, divide. All things which he excels. Polygons, fractions, a man of many spells. The steps are simple, one by one, the numbers infinite. For help in math, both big and small, call Abacus the Great! Hello apprentices and welcome back. I hope you're faring well in this often crazy world of ours. Thank you so much for joining me yet again. This week we're going to be talking about the order of operations. PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Before we get to any of that though, Helix, you're up. Operations is easy. First, you do parentheses. Next comes exponents, then simplify. Then, left to right, divide and multiply. The only operation left inside addition and subtraction. Do them left or right Order of operations is easy First you do parentheses Next comes exponents Then simplify then left or right, divide and multiply. The only operation left inside. Addition and subtraction, do them left or right. Now, as I said before, and Helix just taught us, we're going to be learning about the order of operations. Parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. How about we step down in the computer and take a look at what I meant when I said PEMDAS and please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. All right, now I've talked to you about PEMDAS and please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Both of those are mnemonics to help you remember the order of operations. So PEMDAS, as pictured there, is simply the word form of it, and please excuse my dear Aunt Sally is a sentence that can help you remember the same thing, P-E-M-D-A-S. Now, what is an operation, you might ask? There are four basic operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. As you might have guessed, MDAS, the M-D-A-S, stand for those four things. Multiply, divide, add, and subtract. So we just have the P and the E on PEMDAS, or please excuse, in our statement. Now, parentheses are the rounded brackets you see pictured there. The parentheses tell us that we need to do whatever is inside those brackets first. The E stands for exponent. If you take a look at what I have pictured to the left over there, uh, you've got that four with the little two up top. That's an exponent. We're not gonna harp too much on exponents right now, 
Uh, but exponent is just another form of multiplication where the 2 tells us to multiply the 4 by itself that many times. Uh, for this particular episode, we're going to focus on parentheses and then multiplying, dividing, adding, and subtracting. We might eventually get to exponents in a later episode, but for now, we're just going to kind of, we brush the surface on it, we're done with that. Let's get into the other five for order of operation. I'm going to leave the PEMDAS off to the side over there to help us remember. We're going to look at this first expression, 3 add 5 multiply 2. And we're going to simplify this down to its answer. Now, if we look over here, we need to do parentheses first. Do you see any parentheses in that uh, expression? There's not. Like I said, we're not going to worry about exponents today, so how about multiplying? Do you see multiplying? Yes, right there. 5 times 2. So we're going to need to do that 5 times 2 first. 5 times 2 is 10. So now we end up, we haven't done anything with the 3 or the add yet. So we 3 add 5 times 2 simplifies down to 3 add 10. Do you see any division? Now addition. 3 add 10 is 13. And there is no subtraction. So 3 add 5 multiply 2, our final answer is 13. Now if you were listening to Helix's song, there was a very important thing in it that he said about addition and subtraction and multiplication and division. Those two things happen, or th those two things happen in groups at the same time from left to right. So I don't necessarily multiply and then divide. I'm going to multiply and divide whichever comes first from left to right. So even though in PEMDAS the multiplication comes first, you need to remember that those two things happen at the same time from left to right. Let me give you an example in our expression we have here. 8 divided by 2 times 3. If I were to multiply first, I would do 2 multiply 3, and then I'm trying to do 8 divided by 6, which is possible, but it's a lot harder, and it's incorrect. What you want to do is multiply and divide from left to right. So if I start at the left, I'm going to divide first. 8 divided by 2 is 4, and then I'm going to multiply that by the 3. So 8 divided by 2, multiply 3, your final answer is 12. Now it's the same thing with addition and subtraction. We are going to want to do addition and subtraction at the same time from left to right. So if you look at 14 or 16, subtract 4, add 6. If I were to add first like my A tells me to in PEMDAS, I'm going to end up with 10, and then 16 subtract 10 is 6. Now, this is wrong. Because addition and subtraction happen at the same time from left to right, in this expression, I'm actually going to subtract first. So I'm going to do 16 subtract 4, which gets me 12, and then I have 12 add 6 which is 18. Completely different than what I did when I added first and then subtracted. You need to make sure multiplication and division you do at the same time from left to right. Now if we start bringing parentheses into our expressions, I end up with something that looks like this. In the parentheses I have 12 add 3, and then I'm going to divide by 5. Now, if I follow my order of operations, I divide first, but that doesn't work because I have this 12 add 3 in parentheses, and my PEMDAS, that P, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, that parentheses comes first. So 12 add 3 is going to give me 15, and then I'm going to do that 15 divided by 5, which gets me. Three. So anything inside a set of parentheses needs to happen before anything else. Let's take a look at another one that's a little more complex. So this particular expression has two sets of parentheses now, 
And then we have some multiplication and some addition. Now it tells us we have to do the parentheses first. 3 multiply 4 add 6 or 4 add 2. It doesn't really matter which parentheses I start with, so I just typically start from left to right. Now inside that parentheses, I'm going to multiply and divide and then add and subtract. So do I start with the addition? No, you're right. I want to start with the multiplication because we multiply, divide, and then add and subtract. So 3 multiply 4 is 12. 12 add 6 is 18. We move on to the second set of parentheses. So 4 add 2 is 6. I can then do this division because I'm finally done with the parentheses. 18 divided by 6 is 3. That is the long and the short of your order of operations. PEMDAS, or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, stands for those six things. Parentheses, which are those rounded little brackets, tells us to do everything inside those first. Exponents, which is that little number that's up higher. We'll discuss those more later. Multiplying, dividing. Remember, those two things happen at the same time from left to right. So as I'm reading the expression, if division comes first, I'm going to divide before I multiply. And then the same thing with addition and subtraction. They go from left to right. So as I'm reading the expression, if addition comes first, I do it first. If subtraction comes first, then I subtract first. Parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, and subtract. The order of operations. Let's go ahead and jump into our apprentice question. This week, our question comes from an apprentice named Damien. Hey advocates, I have a question. If I was playing Minecraft and 20 creepers came every day, how many creepers would come in two days? Well, this is a fun question. If Damien is playing Minecraft and 20 creepers come each day, how many creepers come in two days? Well, there's two different ways we can figure this out because this is a multiplication problem. We could do 20 multiply 2. And because multiplication is also repeated addition, we could do one day of 20 and two days of 20. And both of those are going to get us to the same answer. With the multiplication, we're going to look at the 0 times 2 is 0. And then the 2 tens times 2 gives us 4 tens for an answer of 40. If we're doing the addition, 0 add 0 is 0, and 2 add 2 is 4. So, Damien, if you were playing Minecraft and 20 creepers came per day, you would have 40 creepers in two days. Thank you for that question. For our magic trick this week, I bring in a special guest. This is another special segment known as Abacus's Favorite No. You're going to see the magic trick, and then I'm going to give you the week to think about it to see if you can figure out what the trick was and why practically it doesn't work, but magically it's amazing. All right, apprentices, as promised, for today's magic trick, we have a special guest. Please tell them your name. I'm Mrs. Pratt. Now, Mrs. Pratt is a teacher. So, she knows what her magic trick is going to be. It's your job to try and untrick her, figure out what's going on. So, what are you going to do for us today? All right, I'm going to show you how 13 times 7 equals 28. Okay, 13 times 7 does not equal 28. But show us what you've got. All right, so we've got 13 times 7. 3 times 7 is 21. 7 times 1 is 7. Add it together, and it's 28. What? 13 times 7 
equals 28. Ah. Now, multiplication is repeated addition. Can you do 13 added seven times? I can. A and you're going to get the same answer. Yep. All right. All right. Show it to me. So I'm going to add 13 seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to add them all up. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one. Okay. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Add it together. Twenty-eight. There it is. Thirteen times seven. It's a nifty trick. Thirteen times seven equals twenty-eight. And thirteen added seven times equals twenty-eight. Now it's up to you, apprentices. Can you figure out what her magic trick is? That's it for this week's episode on Order of Operations. As always, until next time, apprentices, make sure your math is magical. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Abacus. If you liked what you saw, be sure to click that like button down below. If you want to stay up on future episodes, be sure to click subscribe. If you want to get in contact with me, you can do that a couple of different ways. First off, you can email me, abacusthegreat2020 at gmail.com. You can email in questions like today's or whatever. Reach out. If you want to record your very own video, for Abacus, then go to flipgrid.com slash Abacus the Great. Once you're there, you're going to put in the code MATH. That'll bring you into the grid and you can record your questions, comments, or whatever for me. See you next time.